Look at these guys. What are you guys doing? Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Baba Yaga. Baba is a fairly unique mage in Smite, but is seen almost always in the mid lane. Part of her uniqueness comes from her propensity for building stacking items, which we'll get to why in a moment. Double or triple stacking is totally normal on Baba Yaga, and from there you just want to cap it off with a bit of percent pen and whatever pure power item is best. Currently it's Soul Reaver, but you can go Soul Gem as well for some extra survivability as well. Relics wise, it's just Beads and Aegis. Shell isn't terrible on her thanks to her ultimate, but Beads and Aegis is definitely recommended. Shard wise, I'd say Claw Shard is the way to go, although as I'm sure you know, the shards don't come up often for mages anyways. But okay, onto why you build stacking items on Baba Yaga. Baba has this cabin. It's an asshole. It blocks you, your teammates, and your enemies at the worst possible time. It sucks. But as the Baba Yaga player, it follows you around, it generates essence, shown by the passive meter with the purple bar. It will also gain essence when stationary, but much, much less quickly. When Baba goes near her cabin, she absorbs this essence and converts it into stacks on items, prioritizing whatever item was purchased earliest. There's a basic rule here. Items which evolved when fully stacked are able to be stacked by Baba Yaga's passive. These are the things like Book of Thoth, Karan's Coin, and Warlock Staff, and even Prophetic Cloak, but things like Soul Gem or Tablet of Destinies, which do not evolve when they reach max stacks, cannot be stacked by Baba Yaga. Every item, no matter how many stacks it requires, will require 400 essence to get max stacks on. And even so, if Baba just sits next to her cabin, she will still gain stacks, although much, much slower, to the point that it's really not worth it and you should be spending that time moving around instead so you can get more essence. If you do not have any stacking items, Baba will be healed by the essence instead. It's weird. It's a weird passive. But at the very least, it's easy to get used to. You want to fidget around and roam around anyways as a mid laner this season, so just remember to go back to your house once you have max passive bar, and that's about all there is to this passive. Unfortunately, that's not all you have to get used to when it comes to Baba, since her one is just as if not more unique. Baba fires an AoE in front of her. The size and shape of this AoE is completely random, as are its properties. There are four shapes, an oval, an L shape pointing to the left, and an L shape pointing to the right, and a Y shape. And these are randomly selected, but you can see what the shape will be by the passive meter. The AoE's properties, as I just mentioned, are random too. They can boost ally movement speed, slow enemies, silence enemies, or boost ally protections. Again, you can see which properties it will take on the passive meter. The damage it deals will always be the same, and it only deals damage as the ability is being cast. All the symbol does while on the ground is apply one of those four effects I mentioned. Keeping track of the symbols and effects is a real pain to be honest, but if you want to optimize your play on Baba, you have to. The speed of each shape is set in stone, so spend some time playing Baba and you'll figure out the best way to space yourself with each shape no problem. Then you have the additional effects, which can be a little more difficult to play around. Realistically, the two effects you need to be aware of and play around are the silence and the slow. The movement speed and protections boost for your team are, um, well, it's a nice gesture, but it really doesn't come up often other than occasionally using your first ability in front of yourself while running away. But having access to a slow or a silence does change how you want to position yourself with the ability and, more importantly, when you want to use it. A big AoE slower silence, especially when it's in the Y shape, but especially the oval shape, is massive to just slap on the ground during a teamfight. That being said, since it does respectable damage, you want to be throwing this at enemies whenever you can anyways. But don't forget that you can cut off choke points with the slow or silence enemies off of yourself or your teammates during a fight too. This ability may strike you as Baba's main wave clear ability, and it's most certainly used for that, but she also has her second ability for waves. Baba brews a potion, and once again there are random factors at play here. The ingredients change the properties of the potion, and these ingredients are chosen at random. The potion will either be white, red, green, or blue depending on the dominant effect. However, whatever color the potion ends up being is not the only effect that potion has. Red potions have more Eye of Newt, which adds damage to the potion. Blue potions have more Dragon Scales, which adds a slow to the potion. And the green potions have more Wolf Tooth, which applies an attack speed slow and power reduction. There's a less common white potion too, which has a little bit of every ingredient with no majority ingredient. Keep in mind that each potion has up to 5 ingredients total, so even though it can be a blue potion, it can have the additional power reduction and damage too. It's just all up to chance. Sounds confusing, but we're not even done yet. Baba can cancel this ability and put up to one potion in her consumable slot to save for later, which puts the ability on cooldown, but Baba is able to access the stored potion at any time. And as you'd expect, if you say have a ward and a health potion taking up your consumable slots, you cannot store a potion this way. This ability sounds kind of absurd, and it kind of is, but generally you don't need to worry about a long list of intricacies. Just like with their first ability, you really only want to check to see if the potion has those blue dragon skins. 
This means that your first ability, so long as you have more than one dragon scale, is pretty much guaranteed after the slow on your second ability. And of course vice versa, if you have the slow on your one, you should look to follow up with your two. But again, like the one, this doesn't mean that the other potions are bad, it just means that you play around the slow occasionally and then other times just use the ability normally. And how do you use it normally? Well, if you've got a consumable slot open, you definitely want to be storing a potion as soon as possible. Having access to essentially four main abilities is one of Baba's biggest strengths in the early and mid game. And poke with this ability is obviously extremely easy, and having the ability to 1-2 the wave and then 2 your opponent is very strong. And of course, say full clearing a wave and then still having the ability up to split a camp with your jungler. Obviously you can't do this every time, especially in the start of the match or just if you had to use one of your potions on a camp instead, but it's what you should be looking to do most of the time. But what happens if you have a damage potion stored, but a slow potion in your hand? Well, you can cycle between the potions by pressing the ability button. So, if you have a power potion in your pocket, but spawn a slow potion, you can cycle them and power potion the wave and slow the enemy. Or vice versa, whatever works best in that scenario. And of course this translates to the late game too. When finding someone alone, you want to start with a slow potion, then switch to a power potion. And then start with a power potion when follow up with a teammate's CC, then follow that up with the slow for chase. But what about when you're getting chased? Well, that's where Baba's third ability comes into play. Baba gains damage mitigation and begins charging up, then after one second leaps forward. The destination of the leap is shown on the ground. Additionally, when she leaps, she deals damage in the AoE where she was when the ability was charging up. It's sort of a reverse leap as we know it in Smite. Most leaps deal damage where you land, and this one deals damage where you start, which does come up plenty and is generally better when it comes to self heal. That said, most leaps don't have that one second windup though, but luckily Baba has that damage mitigation as well as knockup immunity to help smooth the process over. Unfortunately though, unlike other leaps, if this leap gets cancelled by say a stun or a taunt or god forbid Ganesh sounds, the ability will be put on cooldown and Baba will be unable to leap. That's a shame, but the damage does come up in some cool situations. Not only can you use it to finish off waves before backing, but you can use it in conjunction with your other abilities when you get jumped on. Silence or slow with your 1, and then 3 away for a boatload of damage. Of course, if you have no CC or are being jumped on by someone who has any piece of hard CC other than a knockup, you do not want to be leaping in their face, as this is quite simply the easiest movement ability in the game to cancel. So it has more uses in terms of damaging and escaping than most other leaps, but is more risky too since it's easily interrupted by hard CC. Surely that makes Baba a bit of an unsafe choice, right? Well, in some situations, yes, but most of the time she can rely on her ultimate to give her just that little bit more of safety. Baba explodes in an AoE around her, damaging and heavily knocking up any enemies in the small AoE. Baba then hides in her cabin, gaining a hefty shield which scales with her magical power, and is completely CC immune, but is unable to use her main three abilities while in this state. Baba is able to do one of two things. For one, Baba is able to cancel out this ability at any time if things get too dangerous. But more importantly, she's able to lob up to four projectiles, which have a similar size and speed to her second ability. These projectiles leave AoEs on the ground after impact which will track the nearest enemy god, and deal damage over time to any enemies currently in those AoEs. All of this, the initial knockup, the huge impact of the projectiles, and the AoEs they create hurt. Like, a lot. This is the big payoff to Baba Yaga. Getting a good ultimate on her is basically a guaranteed win for your team. She's able to pump out crazy numbers with this ultimate and basically force the enemy to stay very, very far away from the projectiles she throws. Some return this makes Baba incredibly good during sieges, since she can very easily use this ultimate for some of the best zone control in the game, both forcing the enemy team off of your towers and phoenixes and forcing the enemy team away from their own structures so your team can destroy them. Clearly though, it's not all sunshine and rainbows though. The projectiles are slow to come out and are very reactable as a result, and since Baba doesn't gain any movement speed or anything in the cabin, typically all an enemy needs to do is use their movement ability and you typically can't catch back up. Still though, that's part of what this ability is for. Of course, you can wait all day for your teammates to burn away enemy relics like Beads and Aegis, and burn movement abilities too, and you come swooping in with this ability to ruin their day. But really what this ability is good for is forcing those things for your team. You enter the cabin, throw one or two projectiles in an enemy squishy, and they have to Aegis it or use their movement ability to get away from you. And then all you have to do is keep on throwing projectiles at new targets to force them away. And you can use this ability for peel in that sense too. Not necessarily with that initial knockup since that's a bit dangerous, but if your team gets engaged on, you can pop this ultimate and begin throwing projectiles into the fight to disrupt what the enemy is trying to do. Of course you don't want to do this too early, as Baba is still easy to jump on in this state. Remember that those projectiles do crazy damage, but they deal with over time, so all an assassin needs to do while they see you enter the state is well, just kind of hit you. There are a few assassins who struggle to apply their damage to you in this state, like Naja and Thor, but most assassins have a very easy time just kind of walking up to you while you're in your ultimate and laying the smackdown. So you need some experience on Baba to know when it's safe to ult. 
but naturally if you ever get jumped on by an assassin who is trying to kill you, this ultimate and the knock up on the initial part of it is a fantastic self peel, as is being in the cabin itself. Baba can very easily completely decimate certain abilities and combos by entering the cabin at the right time. Sasano and Gilgamesh ultimates come to mind, as they're very hard for most mages to avoid, but Baba can face tank it and deal the damage back no problem. Again though, it's going to take some time to learn when to time the ultimate, but as a general rule when you're first starting, just analyze how potent their dive is from their tanks and assassins, and judge whether or not you want to kick back and ult from a distance when your team engages, or if you'll be needing to save this ability for self heal against them. Let's get some combos with Baba. Any version of your 1, and any potion from your 2. Slow potion, 1, second potion. Slow or silencing, 1, 2, 2 again if you have it. Slow potion, silencing or slowing, 1, walk up with your 3, leap away, use the potion after you've landed if you have one. Slow potion, silencing or slowing, 1, walk up, ult, chase as needed after it ends. When getting jumped on, you always want to ult, but then judge how much damage they're dealing to you and cancel and 3 away if needed. For ability leveling, you want your 1 at level 1, your 2 at level 2, and your 3 at level 3. I suppose you could get your 2 at level 1 instead and just get health potions if you wanted so you could store an extra potion. Maybe that's not bad. Baba isn't really a mana hog anyways, so you might not need those mana potions. And plus the double potions will be really good for the current start where you at least 4 camps together, but for perpetuity in case any of this changes, as in maybe the start changes or Sands of Time gets nerfed, I'll just say get your 1 at level 1. From there you want to max your 1, your 2, then your 3, leveling the ult whenever you can. Again, since you can use your second ability twice in a row, I can see wanting to level that. But keep in mind you won't always have the double potion available, and your first ability can hit the entire wave. It's just a safer bet to max your one. So that's Baba, as troublesome for you as she is for the enemy. She's a tricky god to figure out, especially if you're not well versed in smite yet. She's very matchup dependent, not really when it comes to who you're landing against in the mid lane, but what tanks and assassins she's against. She can completely shut down some tanks and assassins game plans, but she herself is completely shut down by others, so it's going to take some time to learn when you have the advantage and when you're on the back foot. Still though, her early rotations are absolutely excellent, especially when you have the slower silence version of your first ability, and she is very difficult to fight against in the new season 10 jungle since her abilities can cut off complete sections of it, especially when it comes to her ultimate. And of course, as you saw in the intro, if Baba is allowed to apply all of her damage, she can very quickly and very easily annihilate health bars. It is a big if though, and I think that's what steers a lot of people away from the character. Stick with her though, and she's capable of things no other mage can do in certain matchups. That's all I have on Baba Yaga for now though. Thanks for watching.